Go, go ahead. This is Ron Foster. He's presenting uh, American San Juan Islands Lighthouse Adventure. Go ahead, Ron. This is an American San Juan Islands Lighthouse Adventure aboard schooner Zodiac. It's April 2006, and on deck there are approximately 22 members to make up the crew of this adventure. We'll sail the Zodiac from Bellingham, Washington, approximately 21 miles south of the Canadian border. Here's an old bank building built around 1900 in the Fairhaven section of town. Here's a double-decker bus, which has been turned into an eatery downtown. Here's your typical building downtown, made of brick, like many of the others. And here's a statue of Daniel Jefferson Harris, the founder of Fairhaven, one of the four cities that merged in the early 20th century to become Bellingham. Here's the U.S. Coast Guard cutter Terrapin docked in the waters of Bellingham. And here's Schooner Zodiac, which was built for the Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceutical Heirs in 1924. This is Gary relaxing down in the study with a Bosun, the ship's cat. This is Lynn, an artist, stretching one of the canvases he did from a prior trip on the Zodiac. Leslie, the cook on board, uh, speaks to the group as to uh, what our meals are going to be like. During our first group meeting, we meet everybody and get to know where they're from and how they got into lighthouses. John, in the center back, demonstrates a life preserver for each one of us. Captain Tim, seated here in a blue shirt, speaks to everybody during orientation. Here, Tim guides Zodiac away from the dock. Laura stores the bumpers. Gary takes the helm while Sandy takes in the view. This is Len's painting of Burroughs Island Lighthouse that he made from an earlier trip. Noted author Charlene Nelson in the yellow explains our route to Ron Drummer on the left, a Nell member, and Bill. Rocky and Doug make repairs to the inflatable, which we're going to use to go ashore. John on the left confers with Captain Carl. Here's Leslie, our cook, working in the galley, getting ready for our next meal. One of the many vessels that we pass along the way. At the helm, Bill receives instructions from Laura. And Ted and Charlene Nelson, the authors, can be seen in the background. Bill is comfortable at the helm. Ron Drummer helps himself in the chow line. It's time to eat. Here I am, Ron Foster, at the helm, taking my turn. Time to don the life jackets as we approach our first lighthouse. Our first lighthouse, Patos Island. A distant view of Patos Island. The first group aboard our inflatable head toward Patos Island. Our artist, Len, sketches Patos Island. We get better views of Patos Island as we get closer to it in the inflatable zodiac. Patos Island Light is about 26 miles from Bellingham, Washington. The isolation proved devastating when seven of Keeper Edward Durgan's 13 children contracted smallpox. 
Hoping to get the attention of passing ships, Keeper Durgan flew the flag at Lighthouse upside down as a distress. Help did eventually arrive, but tragically, three of the children died. This was about 1908. Artist Lynn and his companion Catherine head to shore on Patos Island Lighthouse. Landing on seaweed and barnacle-covered rocks is tricky. A purple starfish among the rocks. Nelson gives a history lesson on Patos Island Lighthouse. Patos Island Lighthouse is abandoned, solarized, and boarded up. I find the sculpted rocks on Patos Island. Very interesting. A purple camas flower. Patos Island Lighthouse, once vibrating with 13 children from Keeper Durgan's family now stands silent over the waters. We leave Patos Island and head for our second lighthouse, East Point Lighthouse. It's a Canadian lighthouse. The original 60-foot wooden tower built in 1887 following the 1886 grounding of the two-year-old John Rosenfeld with 3,905 tons of coal. The grounding occurred at high tide, and when the tide receded, the ship's back was broken. It eventually sold for salvage, but the people of Saturna Island had coal for many years to come. In 1948, the wooden tower was replaced with a, ski with a steel skeletal tower topped by a standard beacon. John, at the helm, chats with Captain Tim, and we pass a container ship, one of many that we see along the way. Ron Drummer takes over at the helm, guiding us on our way to our next lighthouse, and we pass an oil tanker. We spot a a uh, runaway buoy in the water, which we uh, pull up out of the water, try and figure out whose it is and where it belongs. There's Laura at the helm. There's no record on the buoy of who it belongs to, so we store it on board and order to turn it in to the authorities later. <clears throat> Here's Ted Nelson winding up the rope, and we're headed on our way to our next lighthouse, Turn Point. Can see it just up ahead on the port side. A contract was signed in 1892 for the construction on Stewart Island of the station's duplex fog signal building, barn, water tanks, boathouse, and stake light. Work got underway in March 1893, and the buildings were finished by the end of July. After the fog signal machinery was installed, the station commenced operation later that year in November. In 1936, the light was updated to a small concrete tower with a 300 millimeter light and a diaphragm foghorn replaced the dab all trumpet. Here a few folks get warm and grab a bite to eat. Up in the uh, chart room, Don Air chats with Captain Carl. They share a laugh. Here's another view of the chart room. And John and Katie, his daughter, repair lines. 
Our next lighthouse is Lime Kiln Lighthouse. Lime Kiln Lighthouse on the west side of San Juan Island, the second largest island in the archipelago, borrows its name from the lime kilns built in the area in the 1860s. For roughly 60 years, the area surrounding the kiln was quarried for limestone, and a good portion of the island was logged to feed the fires that transformed the limestone. The 38-foot octagonal tower rising from a concrete fog signal building, Lime Kiln Lighthouse, was the last major established in Washington. Construction commenced in August 1918, and the light from the tower's fourth-order Fresnel lens was first exhibited on June 30th, 1919. In 1985, the lighthouse and surrounding sea were dedicated as a whale sanctuary and research station for marine mammal scientists. From here, we head southwest to lighthouse number five, Discovery Island Lighthouse in British Columbia, Canada. Coming into view, in the distance, we see Discovery Island Lighthouse. It's a matchstick-like tower which constructed in the 1970s. This station was de-staffed in 1997. Overhead, we see a plain with pontoons, which is typical out in this area between the islands. Here, Al and Barb hold perils in order to assist Laura in installing them on the sails. <clears throat> These help the sails go up and down along the mast. Here we see um, Laura installing them, and now it's uh, time to raise the sails. So the group gets in line and grabs a rope, and up we go. All in the sails. You can see the prowls going up the sail, up, up the um, mast. And here we have one sail up. And off in a distance, we see our sixth lighthouse location, Trial Island Lighthouse. Trial Island is located south and west of Discovery Island. Here, Trial Island Lighthouse comes into view. There has been an island lighthouse here ever since 1906. There's never a shortage of work to be done when you're sailing. Here, the crew hauls and adjusts sails. And just ahead on the starboard bow is Trial Island. In 1970, a cylindrical Concrete tower with a lantern and galley was built a few feet away from the dwelling, replacing the original light. It stands 42 feet tall and has a focal plane of 93 feet. Flashes a green light every five seconds. The old lantern room and Fresnel lens were carefully dismantled and reassembled in Victoria's Bastion Square where Trial Island's historical light still flashes every night to the delight of tourists. Here, Don Air takes the helm from Ted Nelson and follows his direction. Well, down below, Captain Carl and his sister, Millie, have a little chat over a cup of tea. Distant clouds blend with the mountains. getting toward the end of the day. And here we have Debbie takes the wheel as Doug and Bill look on. Doug checks the horizon as Debbie stays the course. And Rocky consults with Captain Tim. We change course again and head southeast back into U.S. waters. We're going toward our seventh lighthouse, New Dungeness Lighthouse. New Dungeness Spit 
a six mile long flat sandbar, barely visible from a distance, is one of the longest natural spits in the world. On December 14, 1857, the light from New Dungeness Lighthouse, the second lighthouse established in Washington Territory, was exhibited for the first time using a fixed third order Fresnel lens. Charlene and Doug helped Catherine to shore. There's loads of rocks and driftwood on shore. You can stay at New Dungeness as long as you pay a fee and help with the chores. Help uh, with all the people that walk out the spit to see what it's all about. Here we have a view from the lantern room. Looking out, you can see how the <clears throat> spit just keeps going away. And here in the waters is a Trident submarine from the lantern room. The schooner Zodiac, moored just a little ways offshore. And here is a, a docent and a, a visitor to New Dungeness Lighthouse. Gunner Zodiac. Look at this spit. It just keeps going and going and going. And the flag flies outside the keeper's house. This has got to be my favorite lighthouse of our whole trip. Nicknamed Shipwreck Spit for a reason, New Dungeness Spit also has a long history is an Indian battleground, and the skirmishes did not stop after the lighthouse commenced operation, perhaps as a sign of gratitude for light that also served as a guide for them. The Indians never molested the lighthouse keepers. In September 1868, 18 Trimcham Indians were camping near the lighthouse on their return trip to British Columbia after earning wages picking hops in the pile-up valley, when in the dead of night, Clallam Indians attacked and slaughtered the entire party, or so they thought. After being stabbed over 20 times, a pregnant woman played dead while they robbed her of her bracelets and rings and then crawled to the lighthouse for help. Keeper Henry Blake and his wife, Mary, took the woman in and treated her wounds. The Clallam Indians later returned and after counting the bodies and coming up one short, followed the bloody trail to the lighthouse. There was a short standoff when Keeper Blake refused the Clallam's demand to relinquish the woman, but fearing the military might be called in, the Clallam's eventually left. And here we find Len Again, sketching a lighthouse. Charlene passes on her knowledge of the area. And next, we're going to head for our eighth lighthouse, Point Wilson Lighthouse. Point Wilson marks the western side of the entrance to Admiralty Inlet from the Strait of Juan de Fuca. It's an important landmark for vessels traveling to and from Puget Sound. This critical turn was first marked by a church bell. Here we are underway off Point Wilson. There's some pulleys for the sails. And here's uh, Zodiac Bill. Here's Zodiac anchored off of Port Townsend, Washington. <clears throat> A small passing sailboat. We have a chance to go into Port Townsend where we do some window shopping. We see many beautiful things to buy in the shops in Port Townsend. <clears throat> a 
very similar to Bellingham with a lot of brick buildings, a little bit of architecture here. And this is the Port Townsend Bell. We see a ferry passing. And soon there's a crew rowing a gig into Port Townsend Harbor. Is another gig under sail. And here's a crew rowing a shell. All kinds of water craft. Here's a yacht. And so it's uh, time to raise the sails again. One sails up. A lot of teamwork on this journey of ours. A lot of work on the sails. <clears throat> Katie helps to uh, reef the sail. And Len, Laura, and Debbie tie one up. Ahead is uh, Point Wilson. Here, Ron D. and Millie are going ashore. Gary pilots the folks to shore. Bob readies to toss the line to the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. Here's Port Wilson Lighthouse. The current lighthouse at Point Wilson uh, was built in 1914, and the light comes from a fourth order for now lens. Here's Len at it again, sketching another lighthouse. We are greeted by Coast Guard Auxiliary Dave Frazier and Dottie Moss. Dave Frazier gives us a brief history of Point Wilson. And here, Millie snaps an image of Zodiac from the top of Point Wilson Lighthouse. A view of the keeper's quarters from the lantern room at Point Wilson. And here, U.S. Coast Guard Dave Frazier speaks about the Fresnel lens. The lens was made by Sauter Lemonnier in Paris, France. And there's an orange star in the brass plate below the lens. I'm not sure what that's for. Catherine climbs the stairs to the lantern room. And here's a picture of the new and old lighthouses at Point Wilson. The closer one is the, is the old one. Another view of the new one. Of course, everybody uh, made it to the top. <clears throat> and we find Len busy as ever sketching lighthouses. He made a sketch of every single one we visited. And back on Zodiac looking aft. And then looking up at the rigging. Two points to find the entrance to Admiralty Inlet from the Strait of Juan de Fuca, 
Point Wilson on the west, and Admiralty Head on the east. Admiralty Lighthouse ahead on Whidbey Island. And we see a Trident Ballistic Missile Submarine off the west coast of Whidbey Island. And here are two gulls just taking a break. The first lighthouse in this location was established in 1858. It was replaced in 1903 by this current lighthouse. By the early 1920s, the bulk of marine traffic was powered by steam rather than wind, permitting the modern vessels to hug the western side of the inlet. Edward T. Head Lighthouse was thus no longer of consequence, and this second lighthouse was extinguished after just 19 years of service. There are a couple of Fresnel lenses that are on display inside Admiralty Head Lighthouse. The lighthouse eventually was taken over by the Washington State Parks and Recreation Commission. And that who runs it today. And we head back to Zodiac. And here's Bob at the helm again as we sail away from Admiralty Head. A couple of views of the sails and the rigging. <clears throat> and here's Captain Carl. Captain Carl and his sister Millie have a little chat. And Bob has the helm. Bosun prepares to jump from Tim's lap. And Tim and Laura converse. And Bosun sits near the box of life preservers. Up in the chart room, Al is busy charting our course. And Len lays out a ship's name on the life ring, which he later paints. And it's happy birthday to Katie. She turned 25 today. Bosun beds down on some ropes. And Charlene is at the helm now. Charlene stays the course while Bosun comfortably lays down on a pile of rope. Bill researches the ship's diesel in order to improve performance. And Leslie is busy in the galley. Rocky, the storyteller, at the dining table with coffee. We do a course change and head for our 10th lighthouse, Marrowstone Point Lighthouse. There it is up ahead. Marrowstone Point Lighthouse is below Fort Flagler, which you can see in this photo. And guess what? Len is still sketching. Debbie is at the helm past Point Wilson, sailing from Admiralty Head Inlet through the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The winds are picking up.
Bosun enjoys Bob's bunk and a caring hand. Bosun also likes to watch movies on the big screen. We pull into Alec Bay, safety from the storm. The sun goes down in Alec Bay. The next morning, the sun rises in Alec Bay. The sun peeks through the safety ring. the morning bell, and the morning light on the rigging. <clears throat> and here's one of Len's sketches. This one happens to be Ted Nelson. Charlene draws a map with directions to lighthouses by land. And Doug is at the helm. This is a typical deck scene. We have uh, some orcas out in the water. And another passing cargo spot. The funnel storm runoff into a heart shaped pond. And Bob and Karen. Corrals, ropes, bell, and pulleys. And Bill and Debbie. Here a Crowley tug passes. And we soon change our course for our 11th lighthouse, Burroughs Island Lighthouse. There she is in a distance. Strong eddy lines and tide rips can be unpredictable. And from 1897 to 1903, the lighthouse board made repeated requests for the necessary amount of money to build a light station and a fog signal. Check out this 10-legged starfish found on the shore by Burroughs Island Lighthouse. And Don Air and Debbie search the seaweed as the Zodiac is anchored off of Burroughs Island. Is an old U.S. Coast Guard sign at Burroughs Island. And this guy is uh, just kayaking past the lighthouse. There's a better picture of the uh, lighthouse itself. And here's a pet that Laura found. A couple of cisterns behind the keeper's house. all boarded up. And here's the stairs are removed off the side of the house. Looking toward the lighthouse from the keeper's house. And here's a side view of the lantern tower. Of course there's solar panels.
and looking at the keeper's house from the front. This helipad is installed where a keeper's bungalow once stood. The Northwest Schooner Society applied for custodianship of Burroughs Island Light Station in 2006. Four years later, they received a long-anticipated letter from Secretary of Interior Ken Salazar conferring the title to the light station on the Society. As we make our way back to shore, which is far below, we pass these stairs, which I'm not sure, but it looks like there used to be a building there. It is a view looking down from the shoreline from Burroughs Island Lighthouse. And when you finally make it down the shore, you look back up, it's quite a ways to get back up to the lighthouse. And we are approaching Zodiac. It's rocky, relaxing on the deck. And Katie is at the helm. Charlene always has a smile. Captain Tim and Doug and Captain Carl and his sister Millie. Bob takes a break, snoozing in the bow. Plenty of time to read now. There's a passing red sails. And John installs sail covers and ties them up. A passing sailboat. And on the shore, there's an aid to navigation on the rocks. Here's the actual crew of the Zodiac. The people that weren't paying customers, they actually do this all the time. And Bill presents our cook, Leslie, with a gift from the passengers. <laughs> 